Network Dojo. Final video of the series, and that's going to cover a couple of small topics, uh, being fast lane and adaptive fast transition, both new technologies in this version of the lab. So we'll start off with the adaptive fast transition. Um, so this is enabled on WLANs by default, uh, and when you ever see fast transition, that's AO2.11R. So it's that fast roaming technology that's the open standard, doesn't rely on you know, CCKM or things like that. So a lot more clients that can actually support this. So what this does is it enables AO2.11R, but in a sort of a secret way that only newer app, Apple, Apple devices, iOS devices actually specifically, are able to support. So, you know, our phones or potentially tablets, this is not supported as far as I can tell from just, uh, you know, a MacBook uh, laptop or, or something like that. So the way that this is going to work is that we advertise AO2.11R support, but not in the normal security RSN way. We do it through a special information element in uh, the beacons or probe responses. And the Apple devices that are new enough code can look for this type of a thing. And if it sees it and the device supports it, which it wouldn't see it if it didn't support it, when it uh, joins up to the AP, it can actually ask for AO2.11R as they associate and the controller can give it to them. So the devices that don't support this feature they just either don't support AO2.11R at all, or they do support 11R, but just standard 11R, not this adaptive fast transition mode. They never look for that information element. They don't see it advertised in the security portion of the beacons or the probe responses. And so they just never ask for it. Even if they support 11R, they don't ask for it. So uh, standard 11R clients cannot take advantage of this. It's specifically Apple or Apple uh, iOS devices that are of a certain code level or newer. So I think it started with, um, I if it's, uh, I can't remember the code level, but uh, that's irrelevant for, for what we care about for the lab here. So uh, the nice thing about this is there's really nothing much to do other than make sure it's turned on and it's on by default. And there's no need to configure any of the other fast transition security options on the WLAN. So if I was gonna create a new WLAN, I'll call it Jeff-Pod1. When we look at the layer two security tab, we'll see that fast transition is set to adaptive by default. And that's all I have to do. I don't have to come down here and say, oh, uh, fast transition AO2.1X. Nope, uh, it's just regular AO2.1X. This is what we advertise to the regular clients out there. But for the special iOS devices that understand and look for this stuff, we include that little thing in the extra information element. And so those devices can take uh, advantage of 802.11R. Everyone else stuck with regular 802.1X uh, at this point. And then we can we still have the over the DS and reassociation timeout settings that we could you know tweak on top of things, but this is all we do. And again, it's, it's enabled by default. So there's very little to, to do with it, just understand what that is and who it applies to and, and what happens for the devices that don't support it. That's about it for that one. So easy peasy there. The other feature is actually another one that there's really very little to talk about in terms of how to make it work, but it's Fastlane. This is uh, basically a, an auto QoS configuration macro where you say, turn it on and then boom, it just does a whole bunch of configurations on your behalf. And again, it's, it's kind of meant to, to help out these Apple devices here. So it's part of the, that Apple partnership. And so it, it does a whole ton of QoS configurations, both on the WLAN as well as at the global level. And it's just meant to help our, our devices get generally good experience uh, with very little knowledge required to, to implement it. So we, we enable this on a per WLAN basis. So the very first WLAN that we enable this on uh, triggers the, the massive config. So there's a few per WLAN pieces of config, but then there's a whole bunch of global configurations. And so uh, it does all that. And then if you ever turn on Fastlane on subsequent WLANs, really, I mean, those global configs are already there, so it just really only impacts the, the new WLAN you enable it on. Um, there's a big list. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty easy to see. If you ever in, enable this on the CLI, it gives you a big old dump of everything that it's going to do. So we'll show you that, but we'll show you where it is in the GUI as well. 
Uh, there's one conditional setting in here. So if AVC is enabled, it creates a special AVC profile and applies it to the WLAN. If AVC is not enabled, I think it might still create the profile, uh, but it just it doesn't turn on AVC uh, on your behalf. It's just if AVC happens to be on the WLAN, when you turn on Fastlane, it will apply this special profile to the WLAN. If you ever want to undo this, because it is such a far-reaching thing, uh, there is a, a, an option to undo the configs, and it gets just about everything. It's not every single last possible thing ever, but it does a pretty good job. So well, let's go ahead and show it to you. But outside of turning it on or off, there's not much else to know about it, I guess. So we will find this underneath the QoS tab. And there's this fast lane option. So if we say enable, warning, if you continue, uh, this command will temporarily disable WLANs. That's fine. Uh, it will also override the file named auto QoS AVC profile. So it's going to recreate uh, one if you already had one named that. And it's going to apply to the WLAN if application visibility is enabled. You sure you want to do that? So I'm going to hit cancel here. Why don't I turn on application visibility and then you'll actually see it. It applies that. Let's go ahead and let's trigger this in the CLI and see the extra information that we get. So it's config, QoS, fast lane, enable. Which WLAN do we want to turn it on? I think mine was uh, two. So I'm going to hit yes. Okay, here we go. This is all the config that's doing it. So it tells you after the fact, but oh, still going, still going. Okay, let's scroll back up and kind of just see where are all the different parts that it's it's sticking its fingers in. Yeah, sorry, I'm not I'm not back up to the top yet. Okay, so it shuts off our radios. It um, configures the platinum QoS profile to drop down the unicast and multicast to best effort. Only voice gets the voice uh, unicast. Uh, Tra regular WMM cache traffic gets the voice markings or can get the voice markings. Uh, turns off the cost marking on it, so no cost marking. It does some rate limiting in the Platinum profile, so it's, it's setting some rate limiting settings, so more stuff inside the Platinum profile. CAC, it does a number of voice CAC settings for both radios inside there. Um, and it expedited bandwidth, it tweaks the EDCA parameters to a special fast lane profile. It, let's see, it disables the QoS maps, resets the QoS maps, and then sets a whole bunch of QoS map settings. Bunch more QoS maps. Creates that AVC profile that it mentioned. AVC profile, blah, blah, blah. Assigns the QoS, uh, the Platinum profile to the WLAN that we were on. Assigns the AVC profile to the WLAN we're on, and then re-enables the radios. So all of those things just by saying turn it on. And if we refresh we should be able to, to kind of run through and see these things. So back to my WLAN we see that it flipped from silver up to platinum. It applied that AVC profile because I had AVC turned on. We can see that AVC profile. I suppose we go under wireless for that one, huh? There it is, the Auto QoS AVC profile and a whole bunch of rules within here. We have the QoS profile that it did a bunch of stuff to, the Platinum one specifically. So I think it turned off any rate limiting if there was rate limiting turned on. This was already set to voice, but these two were set to voice before. It dropped them down to best effort. It turned off the AO2.1P markings, which is on by default underneath um, the radios, the media, we turned on voice CAC, set it to be load balancing, 50% threshold with expedited bandwidth, turned on. So again, kind of auto qos -y. turn it on, fire and forget, puts a bunch of, you know, good general practice settings to treat voice well. And again, a lot of this is really meant to, uh, to play nice with how these are configured. At least the newer ones of the, the iPhones are configured, the QS map. Uh, trust DSCP, so we move to a DSCP trust model in the upstream direction. We have our maps, we have a whole slew of DSCP exception lists, so definitely working with our markings as well. So that's what it does. If you want to get rid of it, you can turn it off on the WLAN. 
And so if I turn off fast lane, let's see what happens. Apply. So within, it removed the profile from here and it dropped me back down to silver. What about the global level? Did it take away all those things at the global level? Now nah, QoS map's still there. Platinum stuff's still the, the way it was. So then to, for the global stuff, there is under advanced QoS fast lane, this revert global parameters to the defaults. So you hit that. Oh, the other thing that I didn't look at was the EDCA profile. But this is, no, it's just another macro that just undoes all these things that it did and, and it kind of sets things back to the default. So that's the, the other odd thing is, so maybe you had stuff's custom set in voice CAC and custom set in the QS maps. Well, that just got overwritten when I turned it on and it's not going to go back to what, it, what you had it before. It goes back to what kind of what it was at the default levels. And so if I go back to profiles, it puts it back to voice, voice, voice. It doesn't turn on 802.1p back again, so that didn't get turned back on. The QoS map um, is back to disabled. All these exceptions are still in here, but that's because I think of the, there's a command to put the exceptions back to the default, as opposed to just wipe the exceptions out. So again, it's not perfect, but it does get a bunch of things away. EDCA parameters go back to WW, or WMM and CAC back to turned off. So um, there's really not much to it. Like I said, you turn it on on the WLAN and you can turn it off. It does all this other stuff on your behalf. So it's good to know what it's going to do and, and all the places where it sort of sticks its fingers. But um, just be aware of the, I guess, the point of fast lane, just this auto QoS generally intended to make life better for our iOS based devices. But um, yeah, it's just this macro, turn it on, turn it off, and that's about it.